views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hi everyone, welcome to Mission BX. I'm your host, Eileen Newman, and Mission BX is a show that's a collaboration between the Center for Bronx Nonprofits and BronxNet. And we usually take you behind the scenes at nonprofits in the Bronx to see what wonderful work they're doing. Now we're speaking with some of the leaders of nonprofits by the same way you're all speaking to people via computer. So today we're going to be visiting people who've gone through a wonderful program called Communitas America. They're women entrepreneurs and you'll be hearing them from them in just a minute. So stay tuned. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mission BX. And I'm here excited with um, three people from Communitas America, Esmeralda, who works there, and Maury Elena and Stacy, who have projects that came through Communitas. So we're going to hear about what they do and these terrific projects. So, and I'm your host, Eileen Newman, who's lucky enough to be here. So, Esmeralda, tell us about Communitas America, because I feel like they sort of jumped onto the scene and they do this amazing work and all of a sudden they were here in the Bronx. Yeah, no, thank you so much, Eileen, for having me, for having us. Um, so my name is Esmeralda. I'm Director of Programs and Community Relations. And I really want to tell you about Communitas Ventures. Um, but Communitas America, our organization, started in 2018. And what we believe in is supporting social impact ecosystems and underserved communities. And we do that in a couple of ways, but the main way we're gonna talk about today is our accelerator program. Um, we've been through now about four cohorts and each cohort of Communitas Ventures is, has access to a few, few speakers um, to come in and talk about um, experience in their own fields. Um, the entrepreneurs that go through our accelerator, some of them are, you know, maybe new to entrepreneurship and some of them are very experienced to entrepreneurship and have built out their businesses or multiple businesses in uh, um, prior to us. But I think Communitas Ventures is just another little step in their journey. Um, and we try to provide as much resources as we can. And I think the biggest resource that we are able to provide is a $10,000 grant uh, as well as a $5,000 grant at the end of the program. And so as you'll hear from Maria Elena Wallace and Stacey Prime, their um, businesses uh, won that prize and they can talk about how they've been able to utilize that. But for now, Communitas America is really excited because we're launching another small cohort and this one's Women Founders, a uh, Women's Founders founders cohort specifically. And um, we saw that out of a need, you know, a lot of our entrepreneurs have been accepted in our program are majority women, and they became more majority women mm -hmm. as the cohort went on. And it wasn't on purpose. I mean, maybe a little bit, but it wasn't on purpose. It was like, <laughs> Women were applying, women of color were applying and they were starting businesses. And you know, you could read all, all about it, but women are starting businesses today at a monumental increment larger than you know their male counterparts. And even specifically, women of color are also starting, you know, so many businesses. So it's just a little bit about who we are. And I mean, I'd love to tell you a little bit more. I don't know if you have any specific questions, Eileen. Yeah, I do. How do you how do you pick? So you must have a lot of people applying. So how many people do you take? And how because I know there are people who will watch this thinking, I could apply for that. Um, so how many people do you take? And what's the process like? Yeah, no, that's a really good question. So it's really hard because a lot of entrepreneurs that apply to our program, there are some people who have a full fleshed out idea, you know, and then there are those who have a full fledged business, you know, they've been trying to do it as a side hustle or full time job, and they've been getting revenue. Um, 
And so it's hard to say who, you know, it's kind of accepted. Mm -hmm. I think the, the main point is, is your business creating social impact and how? Um, do you want to solve a social issue and how would you utilize business to to really solve it? Um, and you may not have all the answers. Sometimes in our applications, we ask, you know, what are your, um, you know, your three year financial projections? And I think it's not that we know folks will have a complete answer, but it's it's about understanding how far have you thought through this? You know, how much have you been able to plan? How much have you been able to gather in terms of resources so that we could better serve you? Now, we do accept on our Communitas Ventures program, which happens in the spring and the winter, those uh, accept uh, co-ed founder um, ventures of about 10 to 13. But our women specific founder, um, women founder cohort this summer, which will run from August 11 through September 10th, um, we are accepting about 13 women founders. Um, so if your business has two founders, that's okay. You know, we are accepting. 13 organizations who have a little bit more experience um, in terms of their business. Maybe they've had, um, maybe they've been incorporated. You've been, they've been able to produce some revenue along the way. Um, but yeah, so I think for us, the most important thing is, are you willing to get down and dirty, right? Are you willing to create collaborations and partnerships with other mm -hmm. women in the cohort? You know, are, you know, is the social impact that you do just as important as your bottom line because financially, to be financially off, we believe in that, we want that for our women entrepreneurs, but we also want to be able to help them create the social impact that they're looking for. So I'm just gonna ask you one more question that I wanna get to um, our two entrepreneurs. Um, so what exactly happens in that time that people are in the program? Yeah, no, that's a good question. And I think every cohort, we've tweaked things as we go, right? Because we try to listen to our entrepreneurs. And so I'll speak specifically about the Women Founder Cohort coming up. Um, we will be meeting in the evenings. Everything will be virtual. Um, it would be Tuesdays and Thursdays for just a couple of hours that each evening we're bringing speakers. Um, and this time, I think we're being very specific on the speakers who we bring in because we've been listening to some of the needs of our entrepreneurs. Um, so we have speakers who come in and talk about how to negotiate your contracts with your partners as a woman of color. And we bring in CEOs of organizations or directors of, you know, pretty acclaimed organizations. Uh, we also try to bring in some of our own leaders in the Bronx to hear what they're doing. How did they build out their board? How did they build out their organization to build trusting team? Um, these are some of the concepts that we'll be covering during our Women Founders cohort. Um, but in the end, we what we're really looking for is to build out this um community of women who can support one another. And I'm sure that entrepreneurs here will be able to talk about it in terms of the, the friends that they've been able to make, the friends that they've been able to make to help them in accountability or to support them in the resources. Um, but I think this is the core of our program. And then also we we'll still will be providing a $10,000 grant at the end of the Women's Founder Cohort. Um, so these are some of the resources that we'll do, bringing community, bringing speakers from different backgrounds to speak about specific issues that women founders are going through. Um, and finally, a grant, uh, a grant prize that women were able to use for their business. That's amazing and wonderful. I'm sure um, Mori Elena and Stacey, you agree from the smiles that I see. So uh, we're gonna have to take a break in about three minutes, but before we do that, I wanna ask each of you to tell us briefly about your project and then we'll talk about the whole process. So um, so maybe alphabetically, Mori Elena, you wanna go first and tell us about your project? Sure, um, well, first, thank you as Esmeralda. Um, not only uh, to, to be able to all the help that you have done uh, throughout the past couple of months since I joined uh, Communitas, it's 
it's really has been a, a humbling experience. Thank you, Eileen, you know, for this moment. And Stacy, so good to see you. So I just wanted to give those quick shout outs, okay? That's nice, yeah. Um, so my name is Moria Elena Wallace. I am the founder and CEO of Equity Design. So our mission is to be able to improve the lives of underserved communities, specifically in the Bronx, uh, through physical activity. But what makes us unique is that we look at the data that is present and then we use an equity lens to be able to put together physical activity program. So the thing is that what we found in our experience is that not everyone has a positive connection to physical activity. So we want to be able to dispel the notion that physical activity has to have this kind of like no pain, no gain sort of thing. Instead, we wanna bring fun back to physical activity. But the thing is that we wanna also be able to make sure that the physical activity that we're bringing in matches with the health disparity that is that goes within each underserved community. So for instance, the Bronx. The Bronx being number 62 out of 62 counties. One of the things we wanna look at is how are they using physical activity? As opposed to this check the box approach, which is great, but how is it that if we have a community that is stricken by a health disparity such as high blood pressure, why are we not prescribing? We prescribe medication, but we don't prescribe the right physical activity. Right. So that is the approach that I use in getting everyone engaged in physical activity. Great, I definitely wanna hear more about that. And Stacy, what about you? Hi, uh, I'm Stacy McCoy Prime, and I'm the founder and president of Upstream Design Lab. Um, and we are an educational publishing and consulting company incubated through the first cohort of Communitas. Uh, we create transformational learning tools and experiences that educate, entertain, and inspire. Um, we specifically work with schools and right now schools in New York City. And that's a challenge unto itself. So that we have to talk about how <laughs> it's going to play, play out in, in the months ahead. Um, so how did, just quickly, how did both of you find out about Communitas? <laughs> well, it was, uh, for me, it was, um, you know, about a, a year ago, uh, I was uh, unfortunately transitioned from my position mm -hmm. and uh, I was scrolling through my Instagram and it was on my birthday. <laughs> And it came up on my feed. Um, are you a, a social entrepreneur? And I was like, universe? Is this for me? <laughs> Is it your birthday today? <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I, I sat there. I took all the information. Um, I did the, like, a preliminary, uh, preliminary uh, contact information. And, and and I got it out. And I just, I was like, I, I know this is for me. It's, it's kind of like you you can feel it that this is where you belong. Right. Stacey, how about you? How did you find, how did they find you or you find them? No, they definitely found me. Um, another universe thing, I think um, it was an ad that was linked to my Gmail because I had been recently Google searching like entrepreneurship and how to start a business. And I was like, oh, it's a sign. And I said, oh no, it's just like the, Google reading my my search history and giving me, feeding me ads. <laughs> But, and when I clicked on it, I was very, you know, intrigued by the possibility. And what I particularly liked about it was that it was Bronx focused because a lot of New York City's programs and um, resources are, are directed in like, or take place in Manhattan. So, um, or Brooklyn, right? Like those feel like the boroughs that come to mind. And I was very excited to see, I live in the Bronx, I work in the Bronx. I was very excited to see a Bronx based program on entrepreneurship. That's great. So we're going to take a little break now. And then when we come back, what I really want to hear about is how this experience moved you from where you were when you had those karmic experiences of finding communitas and where you are now and where your business is. Stacy, we know that you're facing some challenges with the schools closed, but, but let's talk about where you both are now. So we'll take just a little break and then we'll be right back.
Hi, everyone. Welcome back. We're with um, Esmeralda from Communitas America, as we were before, and Stacy and Maria Elena, who are two of the people who've gone through the programs and through their program. And now we're going to talk about how the program changed their business, their approach to entrepreneurship, etc. So Stacy or Maria Elena, whoever wants to talk first about how, where you are and Maybe, maybe Stacy, let's hear from you because you have a um, a challenging road ahead because you're working in schools. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, everyone who's working in schools right now, their heads are spinning. Um, and all those parents that have become teachers, their heads are spinning. Uh, so it, it's a period of um, transition. Um, and, you know, I think it's, it's really challenging to be an educational based business right now. Um, just because school systems all over are looking at massive cuts and frozen budgets and doing a lot uh, more with less. Um, but it's also a period of disruption and a period of learning. Um, and I have just seen so much opportunity grow out of this in terms of, you know, new reimagining the student experience, reimagining the role that families play reimagining how school staffs can work in different models. Um, so though it is very disruptive and um, challenging, you know, in terms of like the, just the budgetary constraints that, that right. folks are working with right now, um, I'm optimistic because I know that, um, that there's always a need for improvement in schools. Um, and so that I'll always have a part to play in that. And so, Stacey, do you get hired by, is the idea that you're hired by a school district or how, how do they find you? What, how, what's your relationship with the schools? Sure. So it's through individual schools mostly um, mm -hmm. or organization like educational serving organizations as well. Um, and the business is two pronged. So there's a um, educational publishing aspect that puts out curriculum and tools. And then there's a consulting aspect that works with school leadership teams around projects. So one of my current projects is like working with um, a school leadership team, working towards their mission and vision, strategizing, like strategic planning, giving the current conditions, things like that. So it's two pronged. Um, and one of the ways that, you know, I've been trying to contribute during this is just by putting out a lot of content, uh, tools that schools can use that can give, you know, students a great experience remotely. Yeah, that's great. And Maury Lena, how, do, how does your business work uh, in terms of how you find your clients, who they are? So, uh, so, we're at, uh, so Equity Design is a business to business. Um, and so just like Stacy, um, one of our partners uh, is schools. Um, the others are uh, nonprofit organizations. In addition to that, uh, community health organizations. So for instance, yeah. working with like the Department of Health um, or within that organizations that make decisions around health matters. Uh, as it relates to school, it's more about physical education uh, or professional development for uh, teachers or even physical education teachers. Um, my background is really about learning how to use physical activity in limited space. Uh, so to some degree, we've been social distancing uh, with the way uh, I actually do physical activity. Um, the other thing is, again, looking at physical activity in a way where it's that no pain, no gain, and kind of getting rid of that and looking at it, how to make it fun. So as it relates to organization, you know, it's really being the expert for them. What I found in my research and the research I actually did uh, while I was at Communitas is that organizations, they, they do care about the physical health and whether or not physical activity is implemented in communities. The problem is that there's no expert on board. The problem is that they do a check the box approach. And so they're not, again, matching the physical activity with the health disparity. So having the opportunity to work with organizations to say, let's take a look at what someone who is suffering from hypertension or obesity, what would their physical activity look like? Or better yet, why don't we use an equity lens and ask the community, what would their physical activity look like? What do they want to see? <laughs> 
you know, a couple um, before all this, I had an opportunity to partner with a faith based organization in the South Bronx and we did a focus group. What I left with was this quote, contrary to what people believe, we want to live, we want to be healthy. And the reason why that that took me and it made me feel like what am I what I'm doing matters is that people do want to engage in physical activity, but they don't know what to do. They don't know how to do it. And for some communities in the Bronx, they don't feel safe. And so how can we work with faith based organizations and other grassroots organizations to hold them accountable? But before we even do that, because we're not consumer to consumer, I mean, I, you know, there's always this phrase, follow the money. And the money is really with these organizations who, again, are doing the check the box approach to physical activity. You know, it's been interesting because I've been on a committee for a while um, working with looking at organizations that help small businesses. And one of the things that we've done is talk about what do small businesses need? And one of the things that has come up, and I think Communitas is very committed to this, is the idea of a sense of community. So that there's a place that small business people can talk to each other, not just about the the financial pieces, but but exactly these kind of things. The whole issue of how do you you went in to do one thing and then you realized, whoops, that kind of works, but there are these other five things that we didn't we didn't even think about uh, that we can be doing now. So and so, what's what's next for both of you? Well, I, I actually, I wanted to just kind of, just to kind of piggyback off of that. Um, and so one of the things that, that evolved as a result of uh, Communitas is, uh, you know, Stacy and I, we, we connected and, you know, we first, we formed uh, through Communitas, we, there's a round table, which means that all of the entrepreneurs, there's a level of accountability. So we're all checking in with each other. So whether that's through Slack, whether that's through meeting, but we have access to each other. Then, um, you know, there became another level of accountability where Communitas members such as Bronx Bound Books, Shared Talent um, and Unmasked uh, EDU, you know, or the Bronx Learning Lounge, we all came together and as a result formed uh, the collective so that and, and it was actually in response to the city cutting summer youth employment. So we just recently won a grant. And now we're going on with the Communitas Entrepreneurship Spirit and teaching young women, young girls, all about social entrepreneurship. So, you know, what triggered this was when you said community. It's, it's so important because at the end of the day, we're all given resources. But to be able to, you know, when Stacy said to me, oh, Moilanga, here's this resource. Why don't you apply? Because I think you're fit. Or when we said to Stacy, no, girl, just do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. it's it, because even though, like I said, I love my husband to death. <laughs> you know, if I say to him, if I say to him, what do you think about this? Oh, babe, you got it. Right. That's really not helping me. But if I go to Esmeralda, if I go to Stacy, if I go to Bronx Bound Books, Share Talent, Unmasked, EDU, any of them, they're like, mm -mm, girl, you're not going to do that. And that's what I need. Yeah, yeah. I need to hear, girl, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, you need to be challenged. Yes. Yeah. That's, and you know, my my heart hurts because we do um, the Center for Bronx Nonprofits uh, does a women's resilience conference every year, which you all would love. And Esmeralda was supposed to be participating, and it was the end of March. So obviously that didn't happen this year. But we are really hoping to be able to bring it back because it's an amazing opportunity for people to network. And we bring a lot of women to talk about who they are and what they do, not necessarily entrepreneur, as entrepreneurs, but just as people. And so, so I think it would be great to have to have all of you there if, if we can do it again. Because my my concern is that we'll never be able to get two hundred people in the room again for at least for a while. So yeah. we're actually looking at some of the speakers who are going to be part of that women's resilience. Um, mm -hmm. 
conference in term in terms of Communitas America. And because I don't know, I'm just as a person from the Bronx, I am so incredibly proud and I feel incredibly honored to be able to work with these entrepreneurs, local businesses creating local solutions. And I think that's, I don't know, it's so powerful. Whenever I, you know, I'm talking with an organization, they're like, oh, we're looking for something, someone here. And I'm just like, think locally, like think of, exactly. this, think of Maria Elena, you know, think of Stacy, you know, think of um, Constance, you know, think of, um, I mean, there's, there's, there's so many entrepreneurs even who have gone with us through our, our program and so many more um, that are doing great work here in the Bronx. And I'm just, I feel so proud to be able to be part, you know, even just a small step, a part of their entrepreneurial journey. And so you have another, you have a, another cohort coming up and what can you tell people about how they can get in touch? What's next? Because I, I'm sure this will bring people to, um, to the point of thinking that could be me. Yeah, no, for sure. So we have our woman founder cohort coming up. Um, the deadline for applications is July 31st. You can find applications, um, direct directions to our application on our website at communitasamerica.org. Um, we are looking for our uh, you know, women entrepreneurs, are you a founder um, looking for a community, you know, looking to engage with other women founders? Are you looking to, um, you know, maybe perhaps compete for a $10,000 prize? Um, are you looking for entrepreneurs that are thinking just as passionately about social impact as they are about creating money and sustainability in your lives? Then please join us, apply to our accelerator program. We, we all we want to do is provide even more resources as much as we can to you and your business. Um, we believe in your business, so please join us. We will be, um, the program is set to begin August 11th through September 10th. So it's only one month long virtually, and we'll be meeting in the evenings on um, Tuesdays and Thursdays for just a couple of hours so that you can check out some cool speakers and a chance to iterate with folks women entrepreneurs just like you and that is the perfect way to end this because that's all we have time for although i i have a lot of other questions but thank you thank you all for doing this this was great and i can't wait to hear more about these businesses and to hear about the next group of women so thanks so much it was great to meet all of you and to see you esmeralda thank you Thank you so much. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for today. I'm sure we both would have liked to have spent more time with these incredible entrepreneurs who are going through the Communitas America program. If you've missed any of the show or would like to share it with friends or see it again, just go, for, go to bronxnet.tv and look for Mission BX and you'll be able to see this and our other shows there. Come back next time and see another one of the the wonderful nonprofits in the Bronx and learn what they are doing.